I'd like to welcome everybody this morning and a special reach out to our Catapult Education viewers. My name is Dr. Lou Graham, and I will be your moderator today and a presenter for this wonderful and truly global presentation. This course today will dive deep into two practices that are located in Chicago and Pizarro, Italy. One common denominator within each presentation will feature Kettenbach's Visalis Semcore, which is an adhesive cement core buildup material, but the beauty, it's an all-in-one product and thus has multiple applications for clinical use. For the past two years, I've been using this product for many of the restorative challenges that we face in our practices. Those challenges include when a patient calls and says, my crown is out, and oh, guess what? As you turn over to look in the inside of the crown, there's the post and core, or even more often the case, the entire buildup is inside. I've been there so many times over the last 30 years. Well, today you get to see solutions for these emergency appointments. And let's then go beyond emergencies. You'll learn today so many clinical pearls from Tony, myself, and Roberto on cementation and often on preparations that are less than ideal. So I wanna share with you this note from Eleanor Hall. She writes, thank you for putting my crown back in after it fell out three times, not from me. It's fine now and no more problems. And this was already a few months after I put it in. Best wishes for the new year, which should be better than 2020. That's what we're all about, enhanced clinical outcomes. The next slide I wanna share with all of you who are watching today is about Kettenbach's Visalis Semcor review. So last year, 21 reviewers placed over 200 restorations with Visalis Semcor. The material itself was reviewed with stellar results and as a result, it received Catapult's vote of confidence. One slide. Rarely do we have this. 95% or more of the reviewers said they would consider using this material in their practice. Only one was unsure, and there's always one, usually more. So congratulations to Kettenbach on this achievement. And now I'm going to dive back and go back into what I want to present to all of you. I wanna talk about the rest of our day. The flow today will begin with an overview of what makes this material different and the research behind it. We're gonna take you to Germany and hear from Tobias Weller, a key team member in the development process of Visalis Semcor. And I think it's really interesting to hear how this product came to the marketplace. Then as we transition throughout the morning, Dr. Tony Tomorrow, my partner in my practice in Chicago, will take us into the world of restorative dentistry, and I will then follow him and share two specific cases before the final handoff of our program to Dr. Roberto Torini. He then will present on full mouth casework, along with far more additional insights into less invasive techniques, really for crown preparations, along with tons of clinical pearls. Enjoy the program. Thank you very much for your kind introduction and your nice words. So I would like to share my presentation. Okay, so I'm pleased to welcome all of you to my short scientific part about the special features of Visalis SEMCOR. Um, before we'll, we will hear uh, the detail, detailed reports about the clinical application of the material. So I would like to begin with a very short explanation of uh, the system itself especially for those who haven't worked with it so far. So um, the special feature of Visalis Semco, as uh, Lou already mentioned, is that it is suitable for all work under the restoration. So um, we got a two component syringe shown here of Visalis Semco itself, which works as an adhesive cement for permanent looting of restoration, as well as for core buildups. Additionally, you got the Visalis tooth primer here shown in the blue bottle, which is applied onto the tooth structure before placing Visalis Semcor. Um, this uh, Visalis tooth primer is self etching, but also suitable for all etching techniques, whatever technique you prefer. 
It is also notable that no light curing is needed for the tooth primer. So you just apply the primer and that's it. Um, the last part of the system, the Vizalis Semco system, is our Vizalis Restorative Primer, shown here in the black bottle, um, which is applied onto the restoration surface and works with all restoration materials, such as silicate, zirconia, or metal. Okay, so as already explained, um, Vizalis Semco has the two indications shown here, so the cementation and the core buildup. So you need only one material for these two types of indications. The protocol is always the same. So you apply with this tooth, brown, tooth primer shown here in the, the yellow color uh, on all tooth structures, struct, structures Sorry, <laughs> you have to deal with. In case of placing a restoration, you apply the Vizalis restorative primer onto the restoration surface after your normal pretreatment of the, of the restoration surface. And then you place your Vizalis SEMCOR throughout the syringe for the permanent looting of the restoration or the preparation of the core build up here shown in this light blue or here. Um, so we got an easy to use material system, but with the advantage of a high bond strength, as you would expect from an adhesive composite cement, but much easier to use. Okay, so uh, with this other SAM course, full range of indications, you are able to perform permanent cementation of veneers, inlays and non-lays, crowns and bridges, as well as Maryland bridges and root posts. And of course, already mentioned several times, you're also able to prepare a core build up with one and the same material, we saw the same core. So um, I would like to briefly explain the challenges in developing, developing a, an easy to use adhesive cement, which is at the same time suitable for the two indications, cementation and core build up. So uh, first of all, if you want to have a good adhesion, you need a certain hydrophilicity. You might know the old adhesion techniques, etching, priming, and bonding, where you gradually change the tooth surface from hydrophilic to hydrophobic in a number, in a, in a huge number of adhesion layers, bonding steps, several bottles, and so on. So you, you need a certain uh, hydrophilicity for adhesion to the tooth structure, but at the same time, you want to have uh, your composite material very hydrophobic to prevent, for example, water sorption, discoloration, swelling, and uh, yeah, an unstable restoration. So we developed a one component primer, Vizalis tooth primer, shown on the, le on the left, um, which has a hydrophilic character and a very hydrophobic, on the other hand, composite material, Vizalis Semco. So we combined all the etching, priming, and bonding steps in just one step, the application of Vizalis tooth primer, even without any light curing. So um, the hydrophobicity of Vizalis SEMCOR is also mandatory for the indication as a core buildup material, of course, because of its, its uh, low water sorption and so on. But there's one aspect we have to talk about and we have to focus on, or we had to focus on the, uh, during the development and research um, time. So this was um, that there will be no mixing between a hydrophilic primer and a hydrophobic composite, which would lead to a weak adhesion strength. So normally these two will not mix or, or fit together. So um, we had to develop therefore uh, our so-called active connect technology shown here, which overcomes this uh, huge problem. So I will explain this part uh, a bit in more detail. So if you think of your hydrophilic Vizalis tooth primer, here shown in yellow on the tooth structure, um, and your hydrophobic Vizalis Semcor, here shown in blue, um, these two phases would normally stay separated, like for example, water and oil. Uh, but we included a special phase transfer catalyst, and this phase transfer catal catalyst actively mixes and connects the two phases and leads to a very strong adhesive bond between tooth structure, primer, and our Vizalis sample composite. Due to the fact that uh, the Vizalis tooth primer does not need to be light cured, you have a very thin hydrophilic layer on the tooth structure. So there is hydrophilicity only at the interface of the material to the tooth structure. So at the only point where you really need hydrophilicity, whereas the composite itself stays hydrophobic. And this is due to our phase transfer catalyst technology and our so-called active connecting. 
So uh, we combine the advantages of hydrophilicity and hydrophobicity without their disadvantages by separating these two properties. The special characteristic of our without a SAMCOS system leads to a number of advantages like a low water sorption, high mechanical stability and color stability, but at the same time, a good adhesion to the tooth structure and an easy handling. Um, these advantages I was talking about um, can be seen in the technical data of our material, and I would like to show you some of them. So first of all, we were talking a lot about the low water sorption of Uzalis Semco. So here you can see a comparison with other common composite materials. As it can be seen, Uzalis Semco has by far the lowest water sorption ability, indicating a very hydrophobic material as we want to have it because it can significantly reduce discoloration and fractures. Um, the good color stability itself can be seen here. And the, the, this is also due to the, the lower water sorption or low water sorption of Isala Semco, of course. And then this test, testing shown here, um, we were using this of the corresponding materials and put them into typical consumables like coffee and red wine, which can lead to discoloration due to the contained dyes. As you can see, we saw the SAMCOR did not show any discoloration in this testing, whereas some other materials showed significantly color changes, for example, in coffee or red wine. Of course, we also performed um, testings of the mechanical properties of the material, um, like the flexible strength, the compressive strength, and so on. But here I would like to show you the flexible strength of the material in another way, so not the, the normal uh, values of the initial flexible strength, but after an artificial aging. So this time here, we are thermocycling. So thermocycling means you are, uh, have an alternating stress between uh, a cold and a warm water bath between 5 and 55 degrees C. And this time, we did the circling for 5,000 times. As you can see, the flexural strength of Isalis core is still above 100 megapascal. Is, which is a, a very good value and the microscopic images did not show any defects in the material, whereas competitor materials showed cracks or other kind of defects in some cases, as you can see, for example, here or here. Another very positive aspect of the hydrophobicity of Vizalis Semcor composite cement itself is a very low number of leachable compounds. So if extracted with water, which is a quite similar extraction medium compared to the physiological conditions inside the mouth, um, no leachables can be found, no leachables at all for Vizalis Semcor, as shown in the absence of the light blue bar here. Therefore, and together with our completely BPA-free technology, we state a very good biocompatibility of the material itself. So I was talking uh, a lot about the bond strength and the good adhesion. So I also have to show you data about that. Um, so the bond strength, the tooth structure is very high as you want to have it for an adhesive composite cement. This is, as already mentioned, due to the active connect technology itself. We also tested, of course, uh, the bond strength to a number of common restoration materials and found a very good adhesion in the range of uh, the best competitor materials for a set of restoration surfaces. So for example, for zirconia, for lithium disilicate, for a non-precious metal, in this case, cobalt, chromium-based, and for titania, even after thermocycling, so artificial aging, of course. Another short point I want to address is um, the very low thin, thin thickness of uh, the material beside the SEMCOR, which is necessary to ensure a perfect fit of your restoration. And the one last aspect in this part of my presentation, I want to explain a bit more in detail um, a very important handling factor, and this is the consistency of the material. So um, for the indication as a core buildup material and to ensure an easy removal of excess cement, when used for looting applications, you need a stackable material. Visalis Semco has a very nice stackable consistency, as you can see in this picture over here. And uh, there we use a special network formers, which, which uh, lead to a change in consistency if pressure is applied. So this is the stackable consistency. And if pressure is applied, you can go to a flowable consistency. 
and um, for example, during the placement of the restoration. So you can ensure a perfect fit of your restoration due to the very good flowability of the material. If the pressure is once, once again decreased, the material regains its former stackable consistency, so you can easily remove the excess cement. So um, the last part of my talk, so only, I only got 50 minutes, so uh, I'm, I'm almost done. <laughs> um, in the last part, I would like to show you some external studies on Visalis SEMCOR from different universities, so an independent confirmation of the benefits that I was talking about in the last minutes. So uh, first of all, we performed a test at the University of Regensburg in Germany, where we simulated both indication, indications in one setup, so cementation and core buildup. Therefore, the crowns of human teeth were cut off, a core buildup of Visalis SEMCOR was prepared on top of it, and the lithium disilicate crown was looted with Visalis SEMCOR on this core buildup. So core buildup plus cementation with Visalis SEMCOR. And the accelerated aging was done. This time we are a two-step procedure, including 90 days of water storage and the so-called TCML procedure. So thermal cycling plus mechanical loading at the same time with around 12,000 circles of thermal cycling and around 2.4 million, 2.4 million chewing simulations. Um, this procedure um, simulates around 10 years of oral service. After this treatment, 90 days in water and TCML, um, the whole restored tooth was set in a universal testing machine and a pressure was applied until fracture of the, of the whole setup. On the right side, you can see some images uh, of the prepared tooth after 90 days in water, after TCML, and one of the destroyed tooths after the fracture tests. So here are the, the results. We had no fractures or failed restorations after this whole procedure. Um, and the 100%, 100% of crowns um, survived. The fracture toughness after simulation of this 10 years of oral service was still around an average 1,500 Newton. Um, so even after this 10 years of oral service, you still have enough toughness even for critical cases like patients with proxism, for example, where you, where you got uh, up to 1,000 Newton of force on the tooth or under restoration. Okay, let me show you one other um, yeah, external study that we performed. So here we did the, the, the testing of a marginal quality of Visalis SEMCOR. So they prepared at the University of Marburg MOD cavities um, with margins in enamel and in dentin. Um, then they prepared suitable inlays um, looted with Visalis SEMCOR system, whereas the Visalis tooth primer was applied in the self edge mode. So only in the self edge mode, no um, phosphoric acid edge edging or something like this. And once again, we did an accelerated aging in a TCML procedure. And this simulates in this case here, two years of oral service. The margin quality was observed by electron microscopy. An example of an imperfect margin is shown here in this picture. So this would be, uh, such a picture would be an imperfect part of the margin. Okay, so once again, the results. Um, so we saw the SEMCOR revealed excellent sealing properties in the range of the best performing competitor VariLink Aesthetic in this setup here. For VariLink Aesthetic, you should consider that the universal adhesive adhesive universal needs to be light cured, whereas Visalis 2 from a doesn't need any light curing, but has the same good performance as this more complex system here. So values of around 80% are a very good um, value for the margin quality, so you will never achieve 100%. That's not possible. Um, the results of Visalis SEMCOR are even in the range of the gold standard of adhesive bonding systems, which is Syntac plus Heliobond, a multi-component bonding system with multiple steps, including light curing, etching the two surfaces with uh, phosphoric acid and so on. So we are in the same re region, so very good results for the margin quality. Um, okay, so just one very quick summary of all the uh, the features of Visalis SEMCOR. So what are the features? So we've got our two indications, cementation and core build up in one material with an excellent adhesion due to the active to connect technology. The consistency of the material or of the paste is very beneficial for an easy remove of excess cement. And we have a very good color stability 
due to the hydrophobic character of our composite. We provide the uh, Wizard Stem coin in five different color shades shown here. And all of our products are fully free of any kind of bisphenol A compounds. And by the way, I have to mention this, um, we also provide dry-in pastes, of course, for choosing the suitable color shade for permanent cementation with Wizard Stem coin. Okay, so uh, I hope that I was able to show you some interesting insights into the world of Fizal Semco and its special features. And I hope that we can make your everyday work in your practice, in your office, more easier with our system and that you will save time and cost with a very easy to use material that, you're, that can uh, reduce the uh, range of materials in your office. Okay, thank you very much for your kind and, uh, attention. I am honored in privileged to have this opportunity to present with two other great clinicians on uh, the clinical application of Vesalis Simcor. Today, I want to enlighten you and uh, give you the opportunity to see the application of this material. It's a fantastic material. I've enjoyed using it. I enjoy it more and more. And uh, today, I want to show you more than it's more than just a cement core. So I am a catapult education member. This is a disclaimer that we participate in multiple product reviews each year in order to stay at the forefront of the latest materials, techniques, and services available, ensuring the message we are delivering is current and relevant to today's continuing education. Some of these products and services I will be sharing today. Today, I am supported by Kettenbach. As a disclaimer, we always want to show this as part of our catapult education. Here is a great company. We enjoy working with them. It's one of the companies that you saw that we work with. The catapult group current global client base includes, as you can see here, many companies. Uh, we have a great relationship to them. They have us evaluate. We do a clinical evaluation and it's the products that we believe in. A, a lot of the times we start using this on a regular basis in our office. So today, my goal is to get the participants to have an understanding and principles of utilization of SimCor in different clinical scenarios. I'm going to show you some basic clinical scenarios and, have, and show you some other areas where this material can be used on a day-to-day -day basis as you are treating patients, as I myself treat patients. But I want to get you really fired up about this material. I have been working with uh, looting materials for over 25 years and helping companies develop them. And this material is one of the most uh, in, interesting material. It, it, I'm privileged to have that opportunity to be able to work with it as it was developed and evaluated. And I just want to share that at this time with you as well. Dennis prefers systems and pathways and cookbook approaches. Let's face it, the easier we can make something in a clinic situation when you have your hands in that patient's mouth, the easier we can make it, the better off we like it. We like step one, two, and three. And we also don't like a lot of inventory. If we have to have certain cements or certain uh, core material for each different scenario, clinical scenario, that bugs us. We don't want a lot of inventory. None of us like that where your assistant has to sometimes get up from the chairs and go after a different material. I'm gonna show you how this material has its application in different situations. What exactly is this material? As Tobias said, and he did a great job in developing this. He went over a lot of what I'm going to present here as far as repeating a little bit of what he presented. It's a dual care composite for adhesive cementation of restorations, post and core buildups. I'm also gonna show you uh, some other applications with this. The Vesalis Tooth Primer is a self-etching single primer with MDP for adhesive bonding of both Vesalis Core and Vesalis SimCore. It can therefore be used without additional phosphoric acid etching. Only with cementation of veneers, let me just add to that, only with cementation of veneers and adhesive bridges, such as Maryland bridges, and with uncut enamel is selective phosphoric etching necessary as suggested by the manufacturer. So there's very few situations where you have to add selective phosphoric acid etching. That's the beauty of this tooth primer. 
The Vesalis restorative primer is a single component primer containing adhesive monomer 10 MDP and silane methacrylate. And as everyone by this time must know, this is the necessary chemistry that is necessary for when we go to bond and seat our zirconium to create adhesive surfaces internally on restorations. And it also comes with Vesalis Simcor try and paste to simulate color effects. If you wanna see, if you're doing an anterior veneer, or you're doing a cuspid or even molars and you wanna see the color effect of various cements. And I have to tell you that the try and paste is right on with the chemically processed or the light cured Vesalis Simcor cement. They are extremely close. They look like each other. Whereas you may have a lot of cements that when you cure that or that cement is dry, then what happens, the cement and the try and paste, they're two different colors. But let me tell you, the, the Salis Simcor try and paste, it's right on with the cement itself. Also, after you use it, as manufacturers suggest, all you have to do is rinse this paste out and go about your normal procedure for bonding it or cementing the restoration in. So again, these are the shades that we uh, have available. There's five shades and I'm going to show different situations, different scenarios where I use different shades. It's uh, the different shades that they give us is more than clinically adequate to cover what we need. So let's take a look at our first clinical situation. The simple step of the Vesalis Simcor in the cement of a crown. So here's our three components. Easy as pie. Get rid of that inventory. Here on the left, we see the Vesalis tooth primer. We have the Vesalis restorative primer, and of course the cement itself. So this is an Emax lithium disilicate crown. And after trying and rinse off any contaminants with water and air dry, and I might also add that I also will use my regular etching gel, phosphoric acid. It is all ceramic. I will use my etching gel uh, to clean it out for about 30 to 45 seconds to make sure that I get rid of any contaminants in blood. So what I'll do is just put a little phosphoric acid in there for about 30 seconds, rinse it off, dry it. And then what I will do, once all the contaminants are rinsed and dried off, I will have my assistant, as you can see here, and she's putting some drops of the restorative primer in this well. And then what we will do is apply it to the internal aspect of the restoration. And as we apply it for one minute, and then we will let, we apply it and let it set for one minute, and then we will air dry it. So you're going to take a micro brush, you're gonna dab it in the well, you're gonna apply this restorative primer to the internal aspect, let it set for one minute and let it work. And then you will air dry it. And you have to make sure, it's very important that we all check often that our air water syringes that our air is oil-free and water-free when we are drying these restorations. I set that to the side, and then what I will do is, after about 40 seconds, I will apply the tooth primer, and I will scrub the tooth primer on the tooth itself for 20 seconds. I scrub it, scrub it, scrub it, and then I will air dry that immediately. As I'm air drying that, my assistant is loading, the cement into the restoration, making sure that it's evenly distributed and also to the margins of the restoration. At this time, I will seat it all the way down, making sure that all the margins are closed. And I will tack here for two to three seconds. Now, let me take a few minutes and explain this. When we say tack here for two to three seconds, we mean two to three seconds. What I will do is I will tack here from the buckle, tack here from the lingual. Now the interproximals will start and it, they are by this time starting to form into a gel state. So what I do is I push my finger down on the crown, hold it down and I will remove the excess that I tacked. After a few seconds of removing the excess, I will take glide. I prefer glide to go interproximal to make sure that I can get through there once I have final cured this or I allow it to cure on its own and I can get in between that interproximal with my glide to clean out any excess cement. So again, I'm gonna tack here from the buckle, 
tech here from the lingual, hold the crown down, and then I will remove the excess. And after removing the excess, I will then take glide and go interproximal on the mesial distal to remove any excess. At that time, I will either allow the restoration to set on its own for five total time of five minutes from the time I dispense the cement until I start cleaning it out, or I, as I said, I will final care and clean it out. So this is what the final restoration, and when I say easy peel and final care, as I mentioned earlier, I have worked with a lot of looting cements, composite cements over the years. And one of the issues that I have run into constantly is the cleanup, because once that cement state, that cement final set, it is very difficult to remove that cement. It is hard as rock. This material absolutely cleans up. It has an easy peel and it is just wonderful to work with. Here I'm showing a, an x-ray, a radiograph of the restoration we just cemented. And I want you to take note at a couple of things. One is the radial opacity of the cement and the other one is the film thickness. This was one of my big concerns anytime I use a cement is the film thickness. Is it a given us enough space? Is it thin enough that we have strength, which this does, Simcor does, and it also has the right film th thickness that we can see, completely see our restorations. And you can see that on this x-ray right here. Notice that film thickness and the radial opacity of the cement. Also, I wanted to show this recent full mouth reconstruction that I uh, taking a radiograph of the posterior area. And the reason I do this is one, I wanna make sure the restorations, all the margins are wonderful, but also I wanna check for any cement, any residual cement that I left here. Yeah, that's me, my hand on my face, as you can see here, but it's a good thing. So I just went in, cleaned that up and it just comes right off there. That's the beauty, one of the beauties, as I mentioned of this cement. So I do take restorate, uh, x-rays after I seek my restorations. Let's take a look at the clinical application of Simcor on a zirconium bridge. Here, as we all work with on a daily basis is a zirconium bridge. This patient has to be 86 years old, wonderful lady. She had a previous bridge. She wanted to have that bridge replaced when, once I showed her the amount of decay she had on the buckle. And so we went about prepping, taking impressions, sending it to our lab and have them fabricate this zirconium bridge. Here you can see the bridge that came back from the lab and you can see actually see the zirconium with the porcelain on top of that, the zirconium structure. So after a try-in, I will take IvoClean, I will clean the inside of it, rinse and dry it. Then I will micro etch with aluminum oxide powder. Now let me make sure you understand as manufacturers suggest, less than or equal to 50 microns on the aluminum oxide powder. Once I micro etch that, I will rinse and dry that off. And then what we will, and by the way, I, at this time, I just want to make sure everyone understands, especially with zirconium, you do not want to use any phosphoric acid around this zirconium. You don't want to clean it out with it. As you all probably do know, just as a reminder, the phosphoric acid can interfere with the adhesion of this type of bridge, the zirconium bridge or any type of zirconium restoration to the tooth. That's one of the reasons we clean it out after the try-in also is that saliva contains phospholipids that can actually interfere with this cementation process. And just as a side note, uh, in recent polls, it uh, has been shown that 82% of the single restorations coming out of the dental lab are zirconium restorations. So I want to make sure everyone understands no phosphoric acid. After trying, you want to get rid of the contaminants, IvoClean, rinse and dry, micro etch, nothing greater than 50 microns of aluminum oxide power, rinse with water and air dry. At that time, we are going to apply the restorative primer, as you can see here. We're going to apply that uh, and make sure that all the cement surfaces have that on it and let it set for 60 seconds and then air dry and it is ready for the placement of the SimCore in this restoration. As that 
process is setting, I take a micro brush and I apply tooth primer, the SimCore tooth primer to the preps, to each abutment. And I'm going to scrub on each abutment for six, 20 seconds and let, and then I will air dry. I really scrub this on. And you know, that's the key to this. Again, it is a self etching. So we want to scrub it for 20 seconds and then air dry it. At that time, after I air dry it, my assistant is loading the br bridge with the cement in the abutments, making sure that it has a nice amount of cement in there, making sure the margins all have the cement on the margins. Here's the great news. A lot of times working in the posterior, especially with geriatric patients and even all patients, we get real intense at this time because we're fighting time. This is the beauty of one of the another beauties of SimCore is that the time for the pure chemical cure, the self cure, including working time is approximately five minutes. The actual working time is four minutes and working time intraoral oral is approximately two minutes. At the end of two minutes on the zirconium restorations, that's when I hold my finger on the restoration, whether it be a bridge, and I start cleaning that uh, excess cement up. Now you can hold your finger on, some people like to tack here. I prefer to let the chemical care take its place itself. Again, you have five minutes. That includes working time as well. And so working time is practically four minutes. And then after two minutes, I begin to clean up. Again, it, once you get the product, look at the manufacturer recommendations. And this is exactly as they have taught us. And that's exactly what, how we use it in our office. So here, the assistant, again, is applying the cement to the restoration. And here you can see the beauty of the cleanup. This is really, really a nice product to have on a bridge. You can get interproximal, especially on, under the ponic and clean it up. So there's plenty of working time. That's the beautiful. And after this, you can check the occlusion. It, you may have checked it since it is zirconium before you cemented it. The next clinical application I would like to speak about is the SimCore, the core buildup. This is a typical uh, return from the endodontist with an endodontic temporary. Here's a maxillary molar where we're going to build, place a crown on it. And you can see here his endo temp. So what I do is I do my initial prep outline. I remove the temporary, uh, endodontic temporary and the cotton pellets that were in the chamber. And I'm ready to start the core buildup. This is probably the neatest, one of the neatest things about SimCore is that I don't have to get a bunch of items. I have it all right here. So what I do is I apply the tooth primer and then I will scrub that for 20 seconds. After 20 seconds, I will air dry. Then I will apply the SimCore. Now I want you to note something here, depending on how large your core is. I like to cure light cure my cores. So what I'll do is apply approximately two millimeters, just like in composites, if it's not a bulk fill, I'll apply two millimeters and I will core, I will light cure it. I'll apply another two millimeters and light cure it until I have a complete cure, then I will do a final cure of that. Now you can actually apply the entire amount of core material and wait five minutes and let it chemically cure itself. You have that option. I prefer to light cure it and uh, get on with the job. Once I have light cured it, I'll do an outline, a rough outline of the core, make sure I have occlusal clearance, and then I'll finalize my prep. So that, that is how easy that is. So let's take a look at uh, some special considerations and where I have used uh, SimCore in certain situations. Let's look at the block out. Many times, this is a patient, Christo, many times we will come across a patient where we're doing a smile makeover or a single crown, and lo and behold, what do we find? In this situation, tetracycline. Now, I am a clinician who does not want to depend on my laboratory figuring out which ingot to use so that tetracycline doesn't show through. 
So what I do is I take that opportunity to select the dent shade that I want to go with. And I will block out any dark dent that I don't like or anything like tetracycline so that I try to get all my dent shades the same, which makes the final results. I love to use Empress in the anterior. That's my uh, porcelain of choice, just because I personally believe I can get better aesthetics with Empress and I love the translucency and the lifelike appearance. So all I do is I take this situation and I'll apply the tooth primer, scrub for 20 seconds, air dry, and apply Simcor, either the opaque or the desired dent and shade that I want. And you can see here, all I did, 20 seconds on each tooth, scrub it, thin air, apply the Simcor, light cure it. And it goes that easy. And you can see here that now I have all very, very similar dent and shade. And the final results being just as the patient was very happy. This is the day that I placed this in. So you can see here that you don't see any dark coming through. Another situation is, this is Donna. Donna came to the office as an emergency. We sent her, uh, the periodontist extracted the uh, tooth that could not be saved the molar. She returned for a comprehensive exam. And I said to her, I said, Donna, has anyone ever talked to you about the dark area of just below your gum on your top teeth and just above your crowns there. And she said, yeah, they, I always thought it was just part the crown, the type of crown I had. And I, well, I don't think so. Not knowing what's underneath. And lo and behold, when I removed those crowns, this is what we found. So what do you do about this? Because my concern is if I place a beautiful all porcelain restoration on those anterior teeth, that dark's going to show through. So what we do, what I do is I go about calling it what is called a cervical ditch or trough. And you can see here, I cleaned up the tooth, build up the core, and I'm gonna take this small diamond, sometimes I'll take a 330 burr, this tooth endodontically treated. So I will tell you ahead of time, if it's a vital tooth, just be careful. You don't wanna perforate the buccal surface. You don't wanna perforate the pulp by any means if you can avoid that. And so what we do is we take this and we create a trough. And so in that trough, what I will do next real easy is apply the SimCore tooth primer again for 20 seconds, scrub it, scrub it, then I will air dry it. That's what we're doing right here. Once it's air dried, I'm going to apply the SimCore and I'm going to cure it. And as you can see on this, that's how it turns out. Now, I want as best as I can my restoration to be on tooth structure, but I know sometimes that it depends how deep this goes into the gingiva. I may end up on a little bit of a margin of SimCore. That's okay, because that's the cement I probably will use in this situation. So you have cement against cement. And we will monitor that, knowing that, informing the patient that, you know, yeah, we like it on tooth, but in this situation, it's okay if it's on cement. Cement, it's no different than doing a composite. And here you can see the final results. I was able to get it all on tooth structure. And this is how it turned out. It turned out very nice, thanks to my great lab technician. How about this situation that we all come across? For years, uh, when I got out of dental school, we either made gold posts or we made amalgam posts. And here you can see, this is a metal post. And so we wanna block that out. So what I do at this time is I will, first of all, micro etch it. And then I will apply the restoration primer on the metal portion. Only on the metal portion will I apply that restoration primer. I will apply it for 60 seconds, then air dry it. Then I will apply the tooth primer on the dentin, on the tooth itself, scrub it for 20 seconds and air dry it. And then I will apply the SimCore and that's our results. I use the opaque here. And the reason I use the opaque because I knew that I needed something to obviously block out that metal. And there's what I would say was a beautiful result. Same thing here, here's another scenario where we had took some old crowns off and lo and behold, 
blocked them out, cleaned it up, and this was our final results. So every day in the office, there are certain things that we do not want to have our receptionists come up to us or write on the schedule. We have an emergency and a patient called in with this and, and they walk in the office and this is what's in their hand. This is their zirconium bridge. This patient was a geriatric patient. And as you can see in the bridge, there is the core as well as the cement. Two different materials. And I want you to remember that, two different materials. So what I did was I took a curette, pressed on that cement and core, and lo and behold, it popped off. So not only did you have the lack of cementation onto the core in the margins of the dentin and enamel, but it did not adhere to the zirconium crown itself. And this is what we're looking at, again, you don't want to see a lot of these on a daily basis. Otherwise, if it's me, I'm going to evaluate, okay, so what didn't I do right here? But no problem. So what, again, core and cement, two different materials. Re-cementation. After the try-in, I made sure margins are good, contacts are good. I will cleaned it, rinsed it, and dried it. Then I will micro-etch it, as I showed before on the zirconium bridge, and rinsed it with water and air dry. At this time, as you can see here, a good uh, magnification of the zirconium. At this time, I will apply the Vesalis restorative primer for 60 seconds and let it dry. And I will air dry it after applying it for 60 seconds. So here we go. We're going to apply the tooth primer. We all should have this down now where we applied the tooth primer to the tooth and we cemented on. So we scrubbed the internal aspect of the restoration, made sure all the surfaces, internal surfaces and margins were wet, let that set and let that work for 60 seconds. We applied tooth primer to the tooth for 20 seconds, air dried it, cemented the crown on. Now, here's the beauty. You have the core and the cement all the same. So we're not dependent on the core and the cement, two, two different materials bonding to each other and being independent of each other, such as the core is bonding to the tooth and the crown is bonding to the core. We, in this situation, have the all the same. So that's the beauty of this, and I absolutely love it when it comes to re-cementation. So let's take a, a final a look at our final clinical scenario, and that is the use of Vesalis SimCore in the post and core buildup. Preservation of the coronal and radicular tooth structure is desirable. The purpose of a post is to retain core buildup. A feral. And a lot of times when I was in a clinical setting and I was a clinic director, I had to remind doctors, a ferrule is highly desirable when a post is used. A lot of clinicians forget about the ferrule effect. Retention, retention, retention. An adequate ferrule is considered a minimum of two millimeters of vertical height and one millimeter of dentin thickness. This shows is a diagram, diagrammatic drawing of what a parallel and a feral effect. The diagram shows the ideal feral. Now, in most cases, only a portion of the feral will be close enough to parallel to be effective. But even if we get close, we're going to have better retention. And then we want the feral walls almost parallel, uh, at least a millimeter of thickness if we can achieve it. So one of the things I always wondered about in discussion with many uh, dentists is what happens, does light travel down an endodontic post that we place? So as many of you may know, you can order posts in 20 to 25 millimeters in length. So I decided a few years back, I was gonna do a study on this, a very simple study. I made sure that my light was uh, 
at the right wavelength and have was strong enough. And as you can see on the diagrams on the top right and the bottom right, you could see light coming through this. So what I decided to do is take some polyvinyl, put a post in it, and you can see here on the top left, the light being shined on with the amber over it. And I cured this for 20 seconds. And so as you can see on the right with my finger going in there, the cement did not cure with that light. So at that time I started thinking, okay, so I have to make sure that I use either dual cure cement or a self cure cement when I place a post in. Cause a lot of times we are placing these posts down 16, 17 millimeters that light is not gonna travel inside that chamber all the way down to the end of that post and also to cure the end of that cement. Thus, don't rely on light cured cements. Second of all, chemical cure is a must. Chemical cure is another name for self cure. And that's the beauty of Simcor. You have a dual cure cement that has incredible film thickness that allows it to cure on its own or with light. So at this time, it is my pleasure to introduce Dr. Lou Graham, who will take us through the clinical steps of the fabrication of post and cores. I have to tell you that it's been about two and a half years, Lou invited me to practice with him in his practice. And we have an incredible time. We share with each other, there's no ego. We talk about different cases and we learn from each other. And if you ever have that opportunity, I really feel blessed uh, with the fact that I get to share this and also to learn from each other. So Lou, take it away. And I wanna thank everyone for uh, this opportunity. Uh, if you ever have any questions, please call and we appreciate it. Thank you, Lou, take it away. Thanks Tony for being part one of our symposium. I'll be the middle guy, so to speak. And my topic today is geriatric dentistry. And I'm gonna really show old challenges and new challenges, really a blend of both with the contemporary products that we have at our disposal in our practices today. Geriatric patients often present with issues of old restorative dentistry, years of wear and tear, and teeth often requiring a unique approach to extend their lifeline. You all know this, and this is my practice. This is what I see. So I'm gonna show two cases today. Case one will be Jimmy, 76 years old and medically really doing well. He's got failing restorations on really seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, or better put, lateral incisors and central incisors. He wants a natural smile, doesn't want Hollywood at all. And the question is how best to do this. And as a conservative dentist, I'm not gonna crown seven and 10. I don't need to crown seven and 10. Two, the, the, the teeth are in excellent shape. I just need to replace the composites. So this course is really though about how do we rebuild eight and nine, the two central incisors. And when you look at it clinically, I don't have a lot of tooth structure left. This is one view and here's another. And in this view, you can see a large oval canal and there's more to look at in this. And you can also see the failing restoration on number seven, the lateral incisor and the wear on the crown. These, these crowns have been in place for years. So the question is, and I wanna start this course off with, what are the guidelines to really creating an ideal post and core that's gonna last. And these are the essential guidelines. First is you need about one and a half to two millimeters of buccal and lingual ferrule effect. We all know that. You need one millimeter of internal ferrule effect. And let me explain where that is. Looking at the arrows, when you're down looking at a tooth, if, the, if there isn't supportive structure around the canal, we're fearing breakage. So this is called the internal feral effect. And we do have it in this situation, but I would have always liked more. I'm looking for two to two and a half millimeters of biologic width and a crown to root ratio 
of one to one. So let's dive a little deeper into this clinical case. When you look at these two views, I do have that feral internal wall thickness. I do have buccal and lingual feral. I do have biologic width and the crown root to ratio will be about one to one. And you can even see that on this X-ray. So overall, I do think we have good chances for success if we do this right. I do a lot of heroic dentistry. This may look heroic. I don't think so. So let's talk first about the preparation. Normally what I will start out with, with is with Gates Glidden's. And usually I'm going in and I'm really trying to access the deeper gutta percha in this case to create canal space for my posts. So I'll usually go in with the two, three gates glidden and I'll usually use my, I only use electric. So in this case, in all cases, it's my uh, NSK brand and I'm going in at 10,000 RPMs. Then and by the way, that arrow shows you can up and up, you can up the speed, down the speed, whatever you like. 10,000 is a good speed for me in removing gutta percha. And then once I've really gone into the canal and gotten the proper depth, then oftentimes I'll take a small quarter round burr and I'll remove any areas of gutta percha that could be on the lateral walls. And then I'll go in and start do my final shaping of the canal with my DT prep burrs, which I'll show you in the next slide. So these are the burrs and they correspond obviously to each post. And the reason why I love this post system, it's a double taper. It's always an O2 taper in the most cervical because I don't, I want to keep as much tooth structure as possible. So it's an O2 taper and then each different post has a different flare. So the smallest flare is an O4 and it goes up to a 0.1. So I can really customize in a double taper each canal. Well, in this case, this canal was huge. So the first thing I then want to talk about is once it's shaped or prepped in shape, we got to clean the canal. And I think this is such a, an important, important point here. So this was a study, and this is over 10 years ago. It's 13 years ago. And maybe Kois was a a co-author, it calls, talks about the effects of tooth preparation cleansing protocols on bond strength of self-adhesive resin looting cements. Now, we're not even talking self-adhesive, but we're still talking adhesive today. And I believe this is critical, whether you're etching and bonding, self-adhesives, whatever you're doing, I really believe this article and many others show what we have to do to the surface. So instead of showing you this full summary, let's abbreviate it. And what the studies did was it evaluated cleaning temporary crowns with hand, after you remove the temporary crown, how do we remove the provisional cement? Hand instrument, profi with pumice, aluminous oxide with 27 micron particles at 40 PSI, aluminum oxide at 50 microns at 40 PSI. And what the studies, and, and this has been concurrent with study after study, particle abrasion treatment of dentin with alumina oxide provides the highest bond strengths. And whether I'm cementing crown preps, or in this case, a post and core, I'm not gonna just hand excavate. I'm not gonna just use pumice because they are far less satisfactory. You got one shot at this, do it right. So in this case, the particle size really and it's been consistent, did not really significantly influence the bonding strength at 40 PSI. So the use of low pressure and small particles really has become part of our mechanical cleansing protocol for definitive cementation, whether post and cores or crowns. This is one of the systems we use in our office. And in this case, we were using a 29 micron alumina particle size. So this is then sprayed with water into the canal to cleanse the canal. Now, once the canal is cleansed, now we're ready to start really 
figuring out what's the best way to now restoratively treat this tooth. And how do we maximize flexural modulus and flexural strength within the canal with the final post and cord? So that's now the question. So I, I wanna digress just a little, I swear just a little, and I wanna talk about the flexural properties of endodontic posts in human dentin because we, we've got dentin and how are we going to rebuild and I call this damaged tooth. So the flexural modulus really is calculated by taking into account the elastic behavior of a sample within a load range that will not cause it to really deform. So here you are, you're basically bending it and you wanna see how far can you really bend it, so to speak, without deformation. So dentin is low, it's 17 and a half uh, megapascals, I mean, GPA, fiber reinforced post are 25. So they're really kind of close. Gold is considerably greater and stainless steel posts are far greater. So flexural modulus is closer with fiber reinforced posts. But now when you look at flexural strength, which is the resistance to fracture, Denson's around 212. Fiber reinforced posts are around 879 and cast, bowl co cast post and cores are almost double that. Much greater flexural strength. So I love that aspect, but I also want to have flexural modulus. So in this study, all metal posts were found to be really more resistant to fracture, of course, than fiber posts. Thus the reason I really wanted to add multiple posts in this enlarged canal. And it's really the idea is to increase fracture resistance without removing essential canal space. I did not widen this canal. I showed you the original, but here's the largest post, I believe from the DT post system. And, and you can see how much more canal I have. And this is often the case with geriatric patients. And so the question is, does really one post give me my best long-term results for flexural modulus and flexural strength? Will filling that entire canal space be best with a core material around one post or additional posts? Obviously, you could just wiggle this round in the canal. So for this particular case, I put three posts in. I'm going to be increasing the flexural strength against lateral movements. Oftentimes I can get one large and maybe two small or two what I call auxiliary posts. But in this case, I could get three. So basically I am rebuilding my flexural strength. One master post going down and then retrofitting or fitting two additional posts in different combinations to see what best fits this canal. So clinically, I had three posts of varying widths oriented into the prepared canal, always with the largest leading the way. Before removing, know the sequence path for insertion. So your assistant is gonna give you the first post and the second post and the third post. And so what I would tell your assistant, mark it one, two, and three, and that's not sizes. So now you've removed the post, they're contaminated. Trust me, they're contaminated. I'm not gonna micro etch them. It's contraindicated with these posts. I don't wanna create little micro fractures. So what am I gonna do? I am gonna bathe them, not bathe them. I'm gonna just basically place Zerclean or IvoClean on them for 20 seconds. This will remove any of the contaminants within the canal or saliva or anything else. Then you're gonna rinse away after the 20 seconds that the IvoClean or the Zerclean have been placed on the post. Now, here's a big thing for me. The big thing for me here is air drying. If you hit the air on an air and water syringe, air comes out. I always use air. This is how I do my composites. This is how I do everything. So when I use air, it's air only on the air syringe. I'm going to just remove the any moisture on those posts. 
So now your posts have been tried in and now they're clean. So let's go through step one of Vaisalus Semcor system. What you're gonna do, and Tobias should have, did, well, I know he did. Tobias already covered what we do with the restorations. Well, the post is the restoration. So you're gonna use the restorative primer and you're gonna paint 360 degrees around each of these posts. And after 60 seconds, again, air only, no water, you're gonna air each post. Step two. Now in this system, and it's an inclusive system, the canal and the coronal tooth structure, you're gonna scrub them for 20 seconds and time it. Don't go 10. You got one shot at this. So you're gonna scrub it for 20 seconds. And then again, with the air only, you're gonna air dry, okay? No light curing, not necessary. And don't go, well, I'll light cure anyway. It's not gonna matter. It doesn't help. No light curing. So now the next step is you've got your bonding agent in and you can actually see a little cut of percha now that I notice it. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the long canal tip that comes with the Visalis Semcor kit. So you're gonna place the tip all the way into the canal and slowly backfill it. And you're gonna to wanna to see the Semcor coming out. You got two minutes. So you gotta work fast, but not too fast. So you're gonna backfill it and now place your largest post, post one, post two, post three, boom, boom, boom. You should be at 30 seconds to 40 seconds. You got two minutes, 30 to 40 seconds at this point. Now you're gonna tack cure, lock them in, tack cure. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna add more buildup material around the posts and around anywhere you want. Just keep injecting slowly and keep your tip in the material. Yeah, you can see I've got a plenty of excess, but I'm also taking pictures. So now once you've flowed more material around and it's a bulk fill manner, just tack cure it and let it set. Now the setting time, as you all know, is five minutes. So at the five minute mark, now you can go prep away. Do not light cure this and start prepping. You will create internal vibrations, decrease bond strengths because the material hasn't set in the canal. Let it sit the five minutes. At the five minute mark, you prep. Now, openly, you can prep and then light cure or you can light cure and then prep. I like to light cure after my preparation because the material is dual cure. So what do you see here? You see three posts. I know, how cool is that? Increasing flexural strength to minimize fracture. So once again, we had lack of tooth structure. We used three, po three posts to maximize flexural strength and then ultimately a completed post and core. A to Z, that's how you do it. Now let's get to Tooth nine. So after we remove the crown and the decay, this is what I was left with. So I've obviously gonna micro etch this area. Obviously I'm gonna micro etch the posts. I'm gonna be bonding to the posts and tooth structure. So the question is, can we use tooth primer? And the answer is yes, it has MDP. So not only are you self etching and or self priming and bonding the tooth structure, you're doing the same to the post with the tooth primer. Now, once you've scrubbed it for 20 seconds and air dried, no light curing again, you're just gonna inject the Visalis Semcor around the area very, very slowly. Tony likes, for example, to inject and light cure. I like to place it slowly. This does not run anywhere, it doesn't slump, so it's up to you. You could build up the whole thing and then tack here and let it set, or you can just build it up in increments, tack here and keep flowing. It's really up to you. Once you're done, what I would say initially injecting the buildup, tack here it 
let it set five minutes. Why? You don't want to disturb that five minute adhesive process. The other reason why I don't like to even like curing a canal with, with my posts is because you have much more stress internally in that canal, much higher C factor. So again, let everything set after the five minutes, prep away and then light cure. And ultimately you'll have rebuilt two abutments. And as you can see in the x-ray, you can see multiple posts in number eight, the right, right central incisor. And in number nine, the left central incisor, we left a post, we left a pin, and I just rebuilt it. Two weeks later, patient comes in for cementation. A key point, I'm gonna, I want my lab to hand polish my zirconia crowns. And the reason is, is because if, you, if you're glazing zirconia, it's gonna be very caustic to those natural lower central incisors or lower incisors. So I always wanna hand polish. So if I'm adjusting, hand polishing, never glazing zirconia. It's, it's just abrasive to natural teeth. Hand polishing, far less abrasive. So to cement the crowns, just like Tony had talked about earlier, you're gonna micro etch the zirconia crowns. And openly, the latest literature says you should Ivo clean or Zir clean them after micro etching. So it's a combination for zirconia, just letting you all know. So once they're cleaned, then I'll put the tooth primer on the tooth, same thing scrubbing for 20 seconds, no light curing. And that's done after my assistant has basically placed the restorative primer within the crown for 60 seconds and air dry. So what do I do after I put in eight and nine, the centrals? Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna confirm full seating. I'm gonna push them up, hold them for an initial five or 10 seconds. And then I'll usually let the patient bite down. Feel good, feel good, open. I'll immediately tack here. I'll tack here the buckle and I'll tack here the lingual and peel, peel. Then I'll tack here interproximally and very, very carefully peel out the interproximal cement. You can lightly floss and pull out or use an explorer. I don't wanna create bleeding. I don't want micro leakage. At the five minute mark, again, I've let it self set. I'll recheck to confirm all the cement has been removed. I'll like your all the surfaces rotating my light 20 to 40 seconds and you're done. This is Jim's case completed. Composites were redone and this was eight and nine. I believe, I don't know if this was delivery day or not. Don't know. And this is Jim two years later. So this is one of my early SEMCOR cases. I got it early um, from Kettenbach. And I would say stellar, stellar results. Very, very happy. Case two, Phyllis. And this is the stuff that happens every day. And I hate surprises. Do you like surprises? I hate surprises. There is no such thing as a good surprise in dentistry. You're drilling, taking out, taking out deep decay, and there's the pulp. Is that a good surprise? And routinely when patients bring their crowns in, I'm always concerned about what's gonna be the surprise. So this is Phyllis, she's a patient of mine for years. She's been very ill and she presents with lower right second bicuspid and number 29. And she brings it in a container and it's been out three months since she tried to put it in with Gorilla Glue. Now, when I look at Gorilla Glue, I see that Gorilla Glue, it says bonds to virtually everything. So I don't know why this couldn't be a bonding agent in dentistry, of course, I'm kidding. It says it bonds to wood, stone, metal, ceramics, foam, glass, and more. So as I look closer, I just don't see it bonds to tooth structure. So now I got to clean out the Gorilla Glue inside the crown that's been there for whatever, three months, along with inside the tooth. 
So here's the tooth. It's clinically got a short anatomical crown, as you can tell. I've got feral. I've got some internal decay, not a lot. And she's not in good health. So yes, you could say, Lou, why don't you put in a new post and core and a new crown? I don't know if Phyllis would be on this planet for another year. So I explained to her, these are the options. And she goes, for me right now, I would love you to see if you can replace the crown, you know, just cement it in today. Well, how would we do this in the past? We would use a cement and I, and I get that. But in, in many ways, now we're using, as Tobias showed you, something that's got stronger, stronger physical properties than traditional cements. And it can act as a core buildup. So I'm going to get, I'm going to be retrofitting this as the post and the core buildup. And, and I think that's what makes this product so, so unique. So when I look at the sequence of clinical steps, I'll walk you through what we do. So here's the old post and core. I mean, this crown could be 25, 30 years old. So it's done an amazing job for her. So the tooth is absolutely super erupted. As soon as I tried it, well, I'll walk you through it. I'm jumping. I micro etched to get out all the remaining glue and whatever else was in there. I'm going to have to micro etch, obviously, the tooth itself. So let me walk you through everything. So first step, micro etch the crown and the post. So now I'm going to try in the crown. And if there's decay, I'm going to remove the decay, obviously, and not cement in decay, unless it's just going to be a big issue. So in this case, I take my NSK electrics and I've preset them to 2000 RPM. So it's a preset. And I use Comet Cerebers. If you haven't used these, these are, I've been using them for, I don't know, eight, 10 years. This is how I remove decay in endo style. It's literally that slow. So you'll see it's scooping up the decay and allows you to stop when you want to stop. Much less collateral damage than 10,000 RPMs or 20,000 on a slow speed air handpiece, okay? With stainless steel. With electrics, you get air, water, and you customize the speed and they don't wobble like they do in an air handpiece, okay? So I'm gonna remove the decay, clean out the canal. And now, now I'm gonna place my primer. You're gonna place your restorative primer throughout the inside of the crown and the post because we're gonna be backfitting the post with a buildup and cement all at the same time. Now, to clean out the tooth, I'm gonna micro etch. And micro etching can create bleeding. So I use ultra dense blockout material. So when we make bleaching trays, we use blockouts to create the reservoir. It's the same thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, in fact, I'll show you a slide on another patient. I place the blockout material around the crown itself. And then I can micro etch and then I just flick it out. And this minimizes any bleeding. If I had bleeding, then I would use pretty much a stringent and X from Ultradent, scrub it on for 10 seconds, and then rinse it away because I'm not going to cement in blood. So I try to avoid the blood first with the blockout material, if not a stringent and X. Okay. So now I've cleaned the canal and cleaned the coronal tooth structure. I'm now going to once again scrub for 20 seconds. And I'm not just going to scrub the canal. You got to scrub the entire preparation. So you're going to scrub everything for 20. You may go 30 seconds. Don't worry about it. Less is bad. More is good. So you're going to scrub for 20 seconds and gently air dry for 10 seconds. You got to do it at least five, everybody. And I like 10. Start at a distance and come closer. Same thing as the last case. You're going to take the canal tip from Visalis Semcor. You're going to insert it fully right into the bottom of the canal and back fill it. Now, you're probably 15 seconds in, and I'm going to go back. And now you're also going to load the crown. So you're going to load the crown. I want excess cement. So I'm loading the crown for my buildup material. I'm loading the canal for my post. So I'm loading them both. 
And what I want to do is when I seat it, I want to see the cement extrude 360 degrees. Otherwise, you got to take it out immediately and load it with more cement, which you don't want. So overfill it. And then what are you going to do? After you've overfilled it, I'm not going to have the patient bite down on this to see if I know it's already high. I did that when I tried it in, but it was wobbling. So I didn't want to adjust the bite then. I didn't want to create any micro fractures with the post wiggling. So what I did was I tack cured the buckle and I peeled away the buckle. Then I went and tack cured the lingual and then I peeled away the lingual. Now you just, and if you look carefully, look at this slide and there's really interesting. It shows you how easy this is to remove, easy as cement. But you can see uncured proximal cement right there. So I cure the buckle, cure the lingual, and then I cure the proximal again, tack cure for two to three seconds. And that's all it takes with a good light. If you have a good light, like I use my Velo, you cure this 10 seconds, it's set, forget it. Two to three seconds, four max. And then I just allow it to cure for five minutes because I'm gonna be drilling and adjusting the bite, okay? So when do I floss? You can floss after you tack cure the proximal and lightly bring it down. Some people already have the floss interproximally placed. I don't do that, but you can tack cure and then bring the floss down gently, or you can just remove the excess cement with an explorer proximally, however you want to do it. After waiting the full five minutes, I then recure all the margins. And now it's time to adjust the occlusion. Oh my God, she's got a metal. She's down to metal. I'm glad I didn't drill through the crown. I mean, I didn't know. I mean, I knew it was off. I couldn't tell you how thick the porcelain was. And you could say that's unsightly. Well, let's take a look at 30. Let's take a look at 28. She couldn't have cared less. I did a job for her that she couldn't have been more than happy about because she was thrilled. Why? Because she's going home with that tooth. And then the question is, do these happen often? <laughs> this was the next day. Patient comes in and says, this is the crown you put in. I go, I don't think so, Jerry. I don't use those kind of posts. I just don't think so. This took a little bit more time, but you have to do the same process. You're going to have to clean everything out, get that surface clean, get the tooth clean. And you're gonna spend the half hour, 45 minutes re-delivering this. It's just what we do on these geriatric patients. So as I close today, I have one word for this material. It's called versatility. And over the past two years, this is my go-to. Is this my only cement? No. Is this my preferential adhesive cement? Absolutely. And when you are working in areas that you need that adhesive cement and a core material all in one. It's both. I can use this as a core material, just like Tony showed you, or I can use it as a cement, like I delivered the crowns, or I can use it in combination. That's, that's the beauty of Visalis Semcore. And as I thank everybody for allowing me to share, I think you will be absolutely blown away with what Roberto is going to be teaching next. So thank you, everybody. Have a great day. Hi, everybody. My name is Roberto Turrini. I'm an Italian dentist. First of all, before I start talking about my lecture about modern concepts in prosthetic adhesive dentistry, obviously I will be available after my lecture for any question and I will leave you your con my, in my personal contacts, email address, and uh, Instagram and Facebook uh, contacts and also our website in order to, uh, to, to be available also after, after the, the, the lecture, after the recorded lecture, uh, if, in case you have any doubt, any question to, to solve. So uh, thanks again Catapult Education for the nice invitation. And uh, uh, I want to start my lecture with this sentence. Our mind is about to change. Uh, that means uh, for sure a big uh, 
uh, change in our uh, dental behavior as dentist because uh, in 1981 when I was not uh, uh, a dentist I was only three years old so I was not able to prepare teeth uh, Mauro Fraliani that is uh, my teacher and my mentor was uh, able for sure the um, to prepare the teeth in uh, this uh, type uh, in this way why uh, in this way is uh, so different uh, uh, instead of uh, preparation of today because in 1981 as you can see all the preparation are performed uh, in dentin so we can see classical aggressive preparation no trace of enamel uh, at all and uh, as you can see we can find a lot of uh, metal post that means uh, mechanical retention and means a lot of endodontic treatments that were performed before uh, our prosthetic treatment plan while uh, today or better this picture was taken several years ago but today we can have uh, also other type uh, of modern uh, preparation uh, but in 2017 our preparation were for sure more conservative as you can see there are no trace of uh, endodontic treatments no metal or fiber post and uh, all the preparation are performed maintaining enamel that means uh, maintaining a lot of structure for the adhesion for sure today everything changed again because uh, before in 2017 you have seen that the, we uh, performed our preparation uh, uh, trying to achieve uh, adhesion using for example uh, shoulders even though today we don't uh, use shoulders anymore the preparation uh, uh, also for full veneers in anterior areas are performed in order to maintain all the enamel that we can without uh, using any type of uh, uh, mechanical retentive design of our preparations that means that today starting from a single case and arriving at to a full mouth rehabilitation we are able to perform our uh, final restoration without preparing teeth uh, too much that means uh, that we can use adhesion uh, we can use uh, proper materials uh, we can use uh, uh, for sure pleasant uh, materials and amazing materials like lithium desilicate from single case to full mouth rehabilitation when uh, we can uh, obtain aesthetic and functional outcomes uh, and also not only from uh, uh, from our point of view but also from the point of view of the patient also in case of uh, wound addition where we protect uh, our full mouth rehabilitation with a simple ASIC plastic ASIC in order to protect our ceramic final restoration so we can resume these um, four or five pictures that you have seen right now uh, with uh, these two images because everything changed in these uh, years everything changed uh, talking about communication but everything changed also for um, from another point of view from the point of view of dentistry because the classical approach that means uh, 1981 year Mauro Fradiani uh, 1981 uh, uh, approach means uh, endodontic treatment means uh, metal post means aggressive preps and means uh, metal ceramics while today the modern approach means uh, pulp vitality using of adhesion minimal preparation and the use uh, for sure of uh, all ceramics uh, restoration uh, today so we can use uh, a completely different approach not only talking about the dental clinical point of view but also from uh, a technical lab point of view obviously we always need a good dental technician in order to customize our final restoration properly they need to be perfectly glazed perfectly finished polished but also the dental technician needs to be really very accurate in order to create a perfect restoration about uh, regarding finishing line be regarding uh, the transitions line in order to study the possibility of the light to touch the teeth uh, to uh, give uh, the possibility to our restoration to become really uh, very very real so uh, not false restoration and uh, starting about uh, uh, starting talking about uh, final restoration I want to show you a simple clinical case about six 
anterior restoration with the diastemata composition with uh, a color that is not pleasant for the patient so presence of space color that needs to be changed and according to this with minimal invasive prosthetic procedures we can obtain a good uh, final aesthetic result for the six or eight anterior composition if we want to extend our our composition to first premolars and in order to obtain uh, a good result not only from the internal point of view but also externally with the smile and with the face of the patient according to different uh, uh, scenario uh, so today we can uh, work uh, with different types uh, of restoration we can uh, work with tabletop or uh, uh, monolithic posterior solutions with additional veneers with simple veneers or also with full veneers uh, uh, for anterior teeth, uh, for lower teeth, uh, uh, and uh, also with modern preparation with uh, additional central incisor veneers or also for, uh, for example, for this premolar with baccalocclusal veneer, as you can see in my lecture in the following slide. So today we are able to create a good aesthetic solution, a good aesthetic possibility according to any type of clinical case. For example, in this case, there is a discoloration for the central incisor, but if we take a look also of the axis of this tooth, we can see that we are able not only to uh, concentrate and to correct the color of the of the clinical case but also to correct the axis and the inclination of this central incisor with uh, a layered approach but uh, right now we have uh, also in our hands the possibility to use a layered zirconia in order to change for example this other central incisor simply with the new material that is able to create incredible amazing and fabulous final restoration if you have a good dental technician that is able to work with the zirconia restoration the same also with the monolithic zirconia restoration uh, for example in uh, case uh, of other cases where the patient uh, doesn't have the economical possibility to afford for example a, a b-layered or a multi-layered uh, lithium desilicate restoration we have also in our hands a clinical weapon that is represented by monolithic zirconia simply painted zirconia also for anterior cases that the, really works uh, very well and we can uh, use this approach uh, not only for natural teeth but also for full mouth rehabilitation in case of mixed rehabilitation natural teeth plus implants like in this case uh, or in case of uh, full teeth rehabilitation and let's have a look to this case uh, with uh, the picture of 10 years follow-up where after we can see that uh, after um, 10 years uh, this case that was treated uh, for a uh, Sjogren syndrome by our group by Mauro Fradiani is uh, perfectly stable in terms of aesthetics and in terms of function even though 10 years ago maybe uh, we were uh, starting to use this type of uh, modern preparation and we were uh, for sure more confident with the less aggressive preparation than today where we can use also a no prep approach in uh, some cases but uh, this is our workflow the workflow of our uh, group so the philosophy of our group the MIPP procedure that means uh, minimally invasive prosthetic procedures we have uh, written a lot of articles that we can find uh, you can find in PubMed about this topic and we are now preparing uh, our book about uh, minimally invasive prosthetic procedure. If we take a look of uh, minimally invasive concept and minimally invasive prosthetic restoration, we can uh, also analyze that uh, any case needs to be scheduled as uh, for uh, in the same way because um, if we approach a full mouth rehabilitation, a two central incisor, six anterior veneers, or other single possibilities for a single case, for example, uh, we always work in the same way. And uh, let's take a look, take a take a, a quick look to this uh, to this image where you can find that uh, there are some notes that I have drawn and also some lines in order to understand what I wanted to do, what I have planned to do for these uh, uh, six anterior veneers. Because I have managed to use a no prep approach for some 
teeth, a minimal prep approach for other teeth, and also a prep approach for one central incisor due to its buckle, its buckle position. But also in case of this central incisor, when you can find the possibility to prepare, or better, you need to prepare this tooth due to its position, it's very important to understand that also the final view of, uh, of this uh, preparation is uh, very modern because we simply uh, cut the, uh, the, the space uh, according in order to create, uh, to create space. And uh, as you can see over there, the preparation is completely 100% maintained in enamel. That means that the preparation is really modern. The preparation doesn't need uh, doesn't need anesthesia for 99% of cases, and also in case of unpleasant position, we can really be very modern and less aggressive to use adhesion. Why? Because uh, today we are able to work with uh, natural layers, or better, to work uh, with uh, different layers uh, when we do a prosthetic treatment plan. Because everything starts from what we have under our eyes every day, that are the natural layers. But we are able also to work with different layers as prosthodontists. That means ceramic, enamel, and dentin. Obviously, this is only an idea because uh, uh, this is only a graphic presentation because normally we have ceramic, enamel and some mixed islands of dentin in the middle of enamel. And so our uh, reality is completely different from what we really want. But also in present of islands of dentin, it doesn't matter because uh, if uh, we maintain and keep uh, save our enamel, we are able to bond our restoration properly in order to obtain aesthetical and functional final restoration, also in case of full mouth restoration, with minimal preparation and with a very long follow-up. So imagine that when you approach a tooth as a prosthodontist, imagine this article, or better remember this article, because there are not so many articles about adult teeth or better adult virgin teeth that we need to study in vitro. Because normally we can find, as per this article, that the gingival thickness is 0 0.3, 0 0.4 millimeter. The middle thickness of enamel is more or less 0 0.6 0 to 0 0.9, one millimeter maximum in the middle area. And the incisal area is 0 0.9, 1.1 millimeter maximum. But remember this, that uh, when you approach a tooth, that we, if we cut a molar, for example, with a metal disc, remember that uh, in the past, 1981 approach, for example, in order to perform a PFM crown, that means a metal crown, the thickness was 1.5 2 millimeter in the occlusal part and 0 0.8 millimeter in the cervical part without preservation of enamel. Why? Because the dental technician needed to perform this restoration for 0 0.8 millimeter of metal core material and 0 0.7 millimeter of pespatic porcelain material. While today the approach is completely different. We can have a monolithic or a B-layered approach. Monolithic means to reduce the thickness up to 0 0.5, 0 0.8 millimeter for posteriors. That means only stained, not layered, but means for sure enamel preservation. And for anteriors, is you, as you, if you want to obtain the best of your aesthetics, remember that you can layer and use the cutback, for example, for all cases, also in case of uh, severe worn addition, where you have a cut abutment, short abutments, but you can also work with this uh, amazing, fabulous final restoration if your, your dental technician is able to work with uh, this material in the proper way. That means to restore with the new shell of enamel the abutment that you have below if you have maintained the best quantity, the maximum quantity of enamel that you can. Also in case of worn dentition and also maintaining the contact point in some cases. Because if we imagine our worn dentition and imagine the area that needs to be restored again, 
Remember that the red part, that is this, is the lithium desilicate ingot, while the yellow part is the new era, is the aesthetic era. And also in case of one addition, we want to maintain a good support for the ceramic due to have the supporting porcelain concept that we always want in our final restoration. Because in this way, we are able to protect our aesthetic layering done by our dental technician to obtain aesthetics. And we can use this prosthetic solution for any case, for any anterior and also posterior case. But regarding anterior, we can start working with simple veneers for anterior arch. So for the upper arch, for the lower arch, or with the full veneers in case you need to cover also the palatal area or also veneer in the upper arch and lower arch or also full veneer in the upper arch and simple veneer in the lower arch also in case we need to increase the vertical dimension of, of occlusion for prosthetic meaning for for prosthetic uh, uh, solution in order to obtain the best for our patients so remember that we need to reduce tooth preparation that means that this is the traditional tooth preparation approach and remember that there is uh, the approach suggested by some others regarding two veneers and our approach, the approach of minimal invasive tooth preparation, that means to use the full veneer approach with a different inclination of uh, our uh, restoration. So new insertion path of our restoration, that means a different concept of preparation. That means to maintain the enamel, as you can see in this uh, image after etching under rubber dam and that means that the key element is to maintain the enamel so to preserve the enamel in any situation that we can in order to obtain the best and to achieve aesthetic for our patients so we change the insertion path definition we need to select the burrs properly and to follow some rules obviously for anterior teeth why because um, we need to study and to understand what happens or, where, or better what will happen in the incisal area where we need to obtain the best of aesthetics with the internal effects and we need the cutback technique the body area that is very important because here we need to check the right ingot ceramic material in order to avoid the risk of uh, global opacity and apical area that sometimes is this color and we need also to check and to understand what really happens according to the tissue biotype and the same for the functional part that are uh, in the palatal area so the edge to check the space to check the function to check what we have in the opposite arch and uh, it's very easy using also this modern approach to obtain a good aesthetic final outcome that is also a good final uh, uh, functional outcome for sure uh, that means uh, the best for our patient also for posterior teeth but we need to follow the same some rules for functional parts and also for the aesthetic of uh, uh, some situation for example in case of uh, uh, of uh, wide uh, smiles and in all these situations also for posteriors we have a lot of possibilities because you can uh, work with the traditional classification inlay onlay and overlay and with new classification with tabletops buccal occlusal veneer full veneers that means a crown completely bonded in enamel and last but not least a possibility in case of extreme case so the endo crown where we use addition maintaining the maximum quantity of enamel that we can maintain and as you can see in this simple case in order to obtain a good function with the the bridge the pre-existing bridge that is in the lower arch we simply bonded two monolithic emax tabletops 0.6 millimeter of thickness in order to obtain for sure function but also aesthetics and uh, uh, so my what i want to uh, to to transmit today and to give you as a take-home message is that uh, uh, don't forget tradition because tradition is also important for uh, daily dentistry 
as you can see here I have removed an old metal amalgam restoration in order to replace with the new one with the, an indirect uh, posterior restoration in composite that is a reality and is a big possibility but uh, we can use also innovation for some from some situation for example in case of a very common situation crack two syndrome for posterior teeth where you can decide to do something for this patient with the symptoms due to the cracked tooth and uh, if you check uh, the crack is still present under preparation but here we are able to create our final restoration using the lithium desilicate monolithic uh, uh, restoration simply painted and bonded if we can maintain the enamel and we can use this approach also in case we need to increase the vertical dimension of occlusion using the small thickness shell of uh, our restoration that means uh, that we can use this approach for any type uh, of uh, clinical case uh, where you need where you need to increase the vertical dimension of occlusion for example before and after of the same patient when i have decided to increase the vertical dimension of occlusion so the concept today is completely different because what was a crown yesterday becomes a new crown today. Let's have a look to the first uh, molar here in these uh, before and after images. Uh, uh, obviously here there is uh, a need to change uh, the uh, aesthetic and function, but there is also the importance to uh, understand that we can have another option that is represented by zirconia crown, monolithic crown. But what would have been a crown yesterday, or better, two crowns yesterday, for example, uh, for the premolars, uh, today it becomes a baccalocclusal veneer. That means a new aesthetic and functional uh, rehabilitation, prosthetic rehabilitation using minimal invasive prosthetic procedures. Also in case where we need to do something more because we need to increase and to change the vertical dimension of occlusion. That means to have space for restorative material to increase and to reestablish the occlusion, the new function, uh, to minimize and avoid endodontic treatments, to do less aggressive preparation. So there are a lot of options. And we have also published an interesting case uh, some years ago with our group uh, with the 100 rehabilitation that is very interesting because this procedure is uh, for sure safe for any type of situation where we have a worn dentition like this or for example in uh, other situation due to exogenous or endogenous situation like this and remember that we check everything always with the mock-up as you can see in the following slides because uh, uh, with this approach if you increase 1.5 millimeter in the posterior areas you can open like a chisel a lot of space in the anterior area up to 4 millimeter that means a new space for the restoration that means that today we are able for sure not to prepare uh, uh, our molars as in the past but to maintain and to keep the preparation in the enamel without uh, using anesthesia for a lot of situation when for uh, for example when you have also cervical defects or when you have discolorations and you need to cover but you have uh, to decide where to place your finishing margin and uh, in also the, in always this case uh, in all these cases you are able not to use crown anymore but to use baccalocclusal veneer as you can see in these images that are represented by uh, a veneer in the aesthetic area connected to a tabletop in the occlusal functional area in order to create a sure aesthetic final outcome connected to a very important functional objective that is represented by what we are going to do so also using low thickness up to 0 0.7 0 0.8 millimeter in the occlusal area you are able to obtain a good function for any type of cases like this for example a man 70 years old we checked our final rehabilitation using our uh, ipad application that is called get app that means guided aesthetic treatment application that we have created some years ago with our group and then with this uh, traditional approach with this uh, impression as you can see here you can see the 
material impression identium to do this uh, uh, final rehabilitation starting from this point and uh, arriving to this point and checking everything with the wax up and arriving to the final view of our restoration with the full mouth rehabilitation where you can see there are veneers in the lower anterior arch and full veneers in the upper anterior arch and minimal invasive posterior restoration in the posterior areas except of a bridge because I, I needed to change a previous a pre-existing bridge but in this situation it's very simple and easy to use a minimal invasive prosthetic restorations in order to in increase the vertical dimension of occlusion and give you a new aesthetics and a new function starting from this point and arriving to this point with simple monolithic solution for this uh, uh, patient that was uh, a, uh, a, a severe grinder that means uh, that uh, for any type of case uh, starting from a single case a single one central incisor for example up to six anterior teeth up to a full mouth rehabilitation we always need to do a treatment plan treatment plan means a multidisciplinary evaluation so endo restorative ortho perio implants communicate with the patient operative clinical sequence and communication with the lab and operative clinical final sequence that is our final goal because uh, it's very easy as dentist to concentrate ourselves only to six anterior and uh, give the patient uh, a wrong mes message immediately in the first visit that is let's do six upper veneers it's wrong why because if we don't connect these teeth with the, some lines with the face of the patient with the ideal horizon reference plan we for sure will have uh, a wrong treatment prosthetic treatment because uh, remember that the teeth are connected to lips to mouth and to a face but also to eyes to reference lines to everything we need to check and the case that we can for example imagine for six anterior veneers needs to be checked with another complete approach with surgical crown lengthening procedures in this case and then four anterior veneers that is easier than the six anterior veneers that I have planned before or for example another case let's have a look this case with the diastema and with the central incisor that needs to be replaced and we could imagine that uh, for a simple single central incisor everything can for sure change dramatically why because uh, if we check this image in the lateral point of view we can see that there is uh, a lot of composite that is uh, there from another another uh, appointment from another dentist but here in order to uh, obtain the best for my patient i have decided to do a mock-up and the mock-up timing is very important not only for the patient and for marketing reasons to see the before and after and and so on but also for me because at this moment i have decided to do something different that means a veneer in the central incisor and an additional veneer in the other central incisor in order to close the space and to create symmetry for these two central incisors and so to close the diastema it's not easy to imagine what you have in your mind sometimes uh, uh, mock-up is uh, only able to create uh, something that uh, I can decide to do or not or to show patient, patients but it's very important remember to work with mock-up especially in these uh, small cases where it's very difficult to be trapped as dentist or as dental technician and the before and after after mock-up obviously is very important also for the patient but also for me because here I can decide the moment and then can decide what I want to do and this is uh, our, uh, the uh, section of a silicon index at the moment of preparation of the veneers in order to check the space and to check the preparation remember that if you do this silicon index index uh, uh, it's very important that they need to be precise you have a big thickness of this silicon index uh, that need to be aligned and you need to see because they need to uh, check the visibility during preparation and here I have decided to do a 
minimal prep approach for the central incisor and the no prep approach for the other central incisor where I have managed to do a minimal invasive no prep veneer. So this is the moment of uh, impression after preparation using the dentium material. It is a vinyl polyxiloxanator that is very uh, amazing material in my opinion for any prosthetic situation because it's quite hard but not too much and with the hydrophilic properties that is uh, that give this material uh, for sure a good material for uh, prosthetic treatment plans when you need to be precise from natural teeth up to implants and full mouth mixed rehabilitation and remember that with this technique you need a uh, an individual tray as you can find and a low very low pressure in order to obtain a good impression and obviously retraction calls as you have seen in the movie and these are the two final restoration two lithium desilicate let's have a look to the small thickness of this uh, uh, central incisor additional veneer in the mesial area with the thickness of 0 0.2 millimeter just a piece of enamel a piece of glass high translucency glass while the other veneer is uh, for sure 0 0.3 millimeters so nothing thicker so the moment of restoration under rubber dam isolation and the moment of the veneer placing after uh, some uh, hours from the cementation when the teeth were rehydrated but not 100 percent rehydration as you can see from the light lateral central incisor but the moment of uh, uh, when the patient saw the new smile was a really a, a, an happy moment for me because i have done my best using uh, simply my brain and using my dental technician brain and we combine everything with the mock-up and first of all with the wax up but first of all, with an accurate aesthetic analysis that we always do in any type of case for aesthetic and functional reasons. For any case, also in more extended cases, for example, veneers plus crowns, like in this case where I have done some new veneers and new lithium desilicate crowns and uh, uh, new zirconia crowns, sorry, so lithium desilicate veneers plus two zirconia crowns but remember that we when you do an aesthetic analysis it's very important the diagnostic moment to check the incisal position at rest it is the best the uh, best moment that you need to check in your patient mouth because any prosthetic rehabilitation needs to start from here not from the smile and not from the teeth remember the case before because uh, remember that uh, these parameters is crucial when you inform your dental technician for aesthetic and functional rehabilitation that starts to define the new incisal edge position according to the position of the teeth why because if we concentrate ourselves only on teeth where the incisal margin of the central incisor should be who helps the clinician because the new margin could be here or could be here or could be here for example and these are three moments of infinite possibilities that we have and if we connect the teeth with the smile and with the face of the patient in this way we are able to consider an ideal treatment plan because otherwise we can be trapped because treatment plan could be in plan one or plan two or plan three but the right plan is plan two and we are able to detect this according to the aesthetic analysis and the incisal position at rest that is the crucial point before the smile let's have a look at this case before and after so we need to obtain a good balance between incisal position at rest and smile exposure for any type of rehabilitation for any situation that we are going to uh, obtain so this image is very very important so what are the essential shootings to start when you plan a case the closed mouth for sure even though it's uh, important only to understand the thickness of the lips 
and these two moments more or less they are the same can we you can have uh, uh, two different positions that means uh, how this patient expose these uh, central incisors at rest because the smile is completely different and according to the aesthetic analysis i am able to start from this point where you have the canines that are in place uh, uh, in the same place uh, uh, of uh, the lateral incisor so we have two missing lateral incisors we have problem of uh, the gum at the, at the at the gingival level and here before doing a prosthetic treatment plan we did surgery with dr stefano gori of our group in order to replace the new gingival zenits and right now i am able to do a minimal prep changing the shape of the two lateral incisors or better of the two canines that will become two lateral incisors and right now this is the final view of our restorations using a simple monolithic approach and also in the face of the patient so when we work with our dental technician we work with walks and we work uh, with walks uh, to arrive to a mock-up and remember that uh, the first impression that you always do means normally first mistakes what does it mean it means that we, if we use uh, alginate as usual we can be tracked not only by the technique the technique is easy as you know but i in order to to have fun one minute later me myself i took another impression to the same patient and let's have a look the aspects distortion here distortion here in the lateral incisors but last but not least distortion here let's have a look with the caliper what is the right lateral incisor i don't know maybe something wrong here and these are the other possibilities other mistakes that we can find or for example we can find in our final walks this is a simple home bleaching trace that are wrong due to an incorrect alginate impressions so i use a silicone for the first impression or better a silicone to use as an alginate that is called silginate that can be used in a normal uh, mixer in order to obtain a good precise impression first impressions and the same to give our dental technician according to our information a good model for doing a correct wax up and after that i use for my mock-up this acrylic material it is very important and the technique is very simple for the mock-up timing because uh, i use my silicone index i fill it with the bisacrylic material i remove the excesses after 20 or 30 seconds and then after three minutes i remove the silicone index and i give a mirror to the patient in order to obtain more information with this mock-up and the final after the mirror for this patient was uh, wow it seems that we are mother and daughter and my answer was no you are mother and mock-up imagine what could happen with the the full mouth rehabilitation in your case and so i took a lot of uh, images it's very important that the mock-up needs to be clean well finished you take some fancy images you share via whatsapp with the patient because after this it's not mother and daughter and anymore but it's mother and full mouth rehabilitation that is very important for all the reasons that you perfectly know and the posteriors are bonded in the same way altering augmenting the video and creating a table tox or buccal occlusal veneer in the molars and this is the image that i have taken after uh, five years after the normal ear control of the patient for dental cleaning and the same when you always check your patient check your cases for any reason with uh, young patients 
or old patient, remember that you have uh, several colors of mock-up of bis acrylic available. A1, A2, A3, A3.5, B1, BL, that means bleach. These are the colors that I normally use. 80% I use A2. For other patients, I use A3 only if I do a group of teeth, because otherwise, in case of a full mouth rehabilitation, patients want to, uh, to have a clear rest. Uh, teeth so I use A2 also and A1 for young patients or after bleaching that is the bleach option is the same and in case of uh, some uh, marketing reasons or when you want to do your best with the patient in order to obtain the maximum of your mock-up from your mock-up you can also color your mock-up with normal composite super colors, especially in case of young patients where you, the expectations are high, when you have models or uh, some uh, other situation. And it's very important to use these uh, materials uh, in the proper way. Also in case of strange cases, let's have a look to this case, only a central incisor, I don't know. I have checked everything. I have done a dental bleaching before and after this I am ready to do a prost. Prost means uh, only a central incisor, a direct approach or something different. Here I was not so sure but I have uh, decided to do a mock-up of the two central incisor and let's have a look what will happen. It happened this. That means that the patient did at first the mock-up with the bisacrylic. We checked the, the function, the aesthetics, and then we, are, we were ready to do two different veneers with two different shapes. And we use the mock-up as a guide for preparation. It is very, very important because in this case you can work on final volume of your mock-up it is given by your wax up and you don't destroy your teeth at all. So you don't prepare the teeth too much, but you are able to create the right preparation. Obviously, you can remove the mock-up after preparation, the excesses of mock-up, the remaining parts, but you have a good final preparation. That means a finishing line that needs to be done and performed and nothing more. That means that in the past for sure, I would have prepared these teeth for two crowns or in a more aggressive way when today I am minimally invasive for sure with two veneers for the two central incisor as you can see here and in the final view of the restorations an intraolar point of view and in the final view of the smile of the patient. And remember that mock-up is not important only for marketing reasons and for a guide of preparation that are two big topics of our courses. But it's very important to check your mock-up for any type of other possibility. Or better, the mock-up starts with a good impression, first impression. Remember that you need the silicone. Why? Also for other reasons, because in some situation, you need to understand what is the restorations or better the future restoration and the emergence profile that could be here or could be here and remember that a thick tissue wants uh, a thick restoration while a thin tissue wants a thin restoration finally and so the transition area definition is very important because with silginate it's precise, is readable by the dental technician, but with alginate is not. So remember that everything needs to be done also in case of minimally invasive dentistry, like this, for example, rotation of the central of the lateral incisor, incisor, the patient refuses ortho. I didn't want to do a simply veneer, and this is the veneer also with a minimally invasive approach, with a small preparation. Let's have a look how much enamel there is there. And this is the restoration that my dental technician Paolo has performed in order to copy the opposite lateral upper incisor. Or the same in this case. Let's have a look. 
this chromic central incisor internal bleaching was not allowed due to the atresic root canal dental bleaching of all the other teeth check the thickness impression in this case i used penicillin light plus ev body with the retraction cord in order to create a perfect copy let's have a look when we use a retraction cord there is an area that becomes readable and will become able to be covered by the final restoration in case of lithium desilicate with a minimal invasive thickness and we always work in the same way in these patients and so remember that when you do prost we always and this is the last part of my lecture that uh, when you uh, decide to do for example veneers or additional veneers or minimal invasive restoration in prost among other parameters there are five factors that seems to be most important in order to understand if we will have a final pleasurable outcome of veneers first the shade of the abutment second the thickness of restoration and so the preparation depth third the ceramic ingot choice four the shade and opacity of cement and five the shade of the other teeth and final desired shade of the restoration so first point is the shade of the abutment how can we check the shade of the abutment there are some instruments i use this by aveflar vivadent it is the natural dye material specific for discolored abutments according to nd2 that is the less dark and arriving to nd9 the second point is the thickness of restoration that depends on how we have prepared the teeth and remember that if you measure the power of a lamp of medium intensity 900 power of a lamp with one millimeter of lithium desilicate disc the instrument in order to understand if the lamp is working or not this is the real function of the instrument is able to read only half or better less than half of the lamp that means that one millimeter is a lot and let's have a look to two millimeter what really happens with two millimeter lithium desilicate we ask the instrument to evaluate the intensity of the lamp and you will see that it is under the minimal value that means that the lamp doesn't work or better the lamp works but the light is not able to arrive under the abutment so the third point is represented by ceramic ingot choice remember that when you use lithium desilicate for veneers the lithium desilicate is able to allow the light to pass through the restoration if we take a laser like this and you ask the laser to uh, pass through the restoration you will see that the light laser is deviated in an another point but the light is able to pass the lithium desilicate exactly in this way and so if you have a discolored abutment and you mark a veneer a simple veneer that you have there with a black pencil in some cases you can find this the black spots are still visible why because it depends on the ingot choice that means the type of lithium desilicate that you as dentists have chosen according to your ability and you have communicated to your dental technician because otherwise the dental technician if doesn't have pictures information aesthetic checklist skills is not able to create a final perfect work so there are different families of lithium desilicate translucency families low translucency medium translucency high translucency opacity medium opacity high opacity etc 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 
that means that we need to choose our final ingot in order to obtain a good aesthetics and obviously good function for our cases. Fourth point is shade and opacity of cement. And here I want to introduce a small part, a new part for, also for me. The first is which type of cement you normally uh, decide to use. And in the marketplace, you can have LC or DC, that means light curing only, only photo, or dual curing, double, that means light plus auto curing. That means that after some uh, seconds, the cement starts to become hard and to become uh, cured. But uh, you have a lot of possibilities according to what? According to the thickness of first ratio. Remember the two movies, one millimeter and two millimeters before. So with high thickness, more than one millimeter, crowns, bridges, overlays, inlays, onlays, some endo crowns, you need to use a dual curing cement. Why? Because if you don't use a dual curing cement, the light is not able to pass through the material lithium desilicate. Imagine through the zirconia is impossible or through meta ceramics is impossible. But with blow thickness less than one millimeter, so veneers, small additional veneers, full veneers, tabletops, buckle occlusal veneers, you can have two options, light curing or dual curing. Uh, both options are okay in our philosophy, in our group philosophy. If you want to be to work only with the light curing cement, for sure you will give the light the maximum, the 100% of action. If you want to use with the, to work with the dual cement, you will give also the cement an important part of curing. But remember that if you use a light curing, the uh, during finishing and uh, removing the uh, the cement excess with floss, for example, the restoration is able to move, especially with uh, uh, small pieces of additional veneers, for example. But on the other hand, using a dual curing cement, remember that you will have less time than a light curing only cement. But you have these two options according to the marketplace. For example, in this case, I had a, an abutment with an old metal over there, I have restored the tooth using Visalis Core, that is a, a filling material without pores, without any type of other uh, retentive traditional restoration. I don't use pores anymore, so only in some small cases. Zirconia crown and pretreatment of the abutment and Visalis Chem Core. Three steps. The first step is in the restoration. The second step with Battle 2 is on the abutment. And the third one is to fill the restoration with the cement. You are curing cement, easy to be removed after some minutes or with a light uh, spot. And I like to pass the floss in this phase in order to have the surface perfectly clean and give the final curing by the lamp or waiting or both is possible. The second option is represented by this and I think it's very important because I finalized this case uh, maybe one month ago in Florence where I work because I don't have my own dental office, but I work as a freelance in different offices as a prosthodontist. So I only do prosthetic cases on implants and uh, um, natural teeth. And in this case, I have used a dual curing cement. Why? Because to bond this bridge, I have the abutment, the holes in the bridge, I fill with cotton, I use the primer for the restoration, I brush on the zirconia, I wait one minute and then I use 
gently the air, then Rizalis Chem Core, specific for zirconia. I remove the first steps, the st first uh, part of the cement, if it is completely new. And then after this, a small part also on the abutments, I put my final bridge, I push and I remove the cottons inside the holes and in this way I am able to remove, cure and cement everything out of the mouth and then I skew and I do an x-ray in order to evaluate that everything is okay. So it's very easy in this way. Or let's have a look in another situation, common daily situation. Let's have a look. In direct posterior restoration and the treated I remove all the decays etching visually score to fill without post I use my probe in order to avoid the bubble presence glycerin to complete finally the curing we talked about this in the question and answer panel Two days ago final view under rubber dam after cementation with visali semcore and final view after rubber dam removing the second point is represented by cement color and uh, if we use a light cure or dual cure cement we always have the same problem and i have decided to do as for the other education, this clinical research by myself, independent research, sometimes we do this in office. Uh, we, we are not uh, researchers, we are clinicals, uh, but uh, we uh, sometimes we have fun to do this. And so we use the same light at the same hour in the same soft box. We use the basement for flowers to place our restoration that is a simple veneer on an abutment and we check two possibilities the photo position and the evaluation by a spectrophotometer in two different positions in the flower basement with same settings of the camera same distance and in the photographic view where we add a veneer overlapped to a, an abutment done with the natural dye material composite to simulate the abutment in the mouth and the veneer was overlapped here on this abutment right now the second was represented by color measurement by spectro shade and our final restoration was a low translucent ingot 0 0.9 millimeter so low translucent with a less than one millimeter thickness that means a big thickness with a night opacity medium opacity but it's quite tight to cover and to mask a severe discoloration and uh, my question was uh, are trying paste predictable because uh, we can check with water, we can check with the translucent triene, we can check with the universal that is A2 or A3 triene, we can check with opaque triene, we can check with bleach triene, or we can check with the darkest one that is dark A4, who is exactly the best. So for the photo with water let's have a look to the color given by spectrophotometer with translucent same color and same measurement same final aspect if we change to the universal to the opaque to the bleach where something is changing here in the incisal area and finally in the dark and now my question is what changed with these triines? That means what we, we could change 
with the different color cements. For sure, we'll uh, change something with the dark triene, that means the dark cement. Let's have a look. Why? Because even though if you have a low translucent ingot that is quite opaque, in the thinner area, 0.2 mm, that is in the apical cervical part, you will have a change. So the use of triene paste is useful in aesthetic dentistry before adhesive cementation of veneers and especially with high translucent ingots. And the use of darker triene paste can change the final outcome also in presence of low translucency ingots with lowest thickness area, 0.3-0.4 mm, typically in the apical cervical zone. That is very important. So that is the reason why, as per what I have uh, uh, answered in the panelist question and answer, uh, my uh, behavior normally 99% is to use uh, natural transparent triens, that means natural transparent uh, cement. Because otherwise, if I have to use some opaque, bleach, dark triene, that means dark cement, etc., etc., uh, it means that there is something wrong in my choice of the ceramic ingot or in the lab uh, work. Only in some cases where I want to change something, I can use color triens, that means uh, and will be colored cement. And last but not least, the last point is represented by the shade of the other teeth and final desired share. And remember that to obtain aesthetics, you can do the cutback, obtaining the maximum aesthetics and evaluation the final color with the classical treatment, prosthetic treatments. Like in this case, let's have a look. We work in the same way, mock-up, also for two, two central incisor, guide for preparation by the mock-up. The most discolored is more prepared. And then preparation, impression, provisionals, temporary restoration using mock-up, color of the abutments and lithium desilicate both layer in order to obtain our final result and combining dental bleaching procedures with the own technique for all the other teeth. This is my group, it's called Fradian Education. We do worldwide basic and advanced course, we do national and international conferences not only in the web, but also in presence. We hope uh, uh, in, uh, to come back soon to our real life. We have an application for the prosthetic treatment plan and we publish books and articles on international magazine. Uh, Mauro Fradiani is uh, the teacher and mentor of the whole group and we have, have uh, uh, five people, five lecturers that are the founder members, but now the family is increasing so we have the founder members on the top and the new members in the lower part of the slide so totally now we can cover every part of dentistry and we are for sure a real school of dentistry post university so uh, thank you again catapult education the power of a smile is what uh, we have uh, today as uh, the also uh, as we we want to come back to normality really soon and so good luck to you and your families for your careers and we hope to see in presence each other maybe in usa i am available for doing a real course in presence in the next future and these are my personal contacts in case you have any type of questions uh, because uh, you are able to see only my lecture uh, in uh, not in a live mood. So this is my email, my Instagram, my Facebook and our group website fradianieducation.com and uh, thank you very much all the attendants for your kind attention. Bye bye.